Hi, I'm Wolfgang from Assault Games <coughs> and today I want to share new videos uh, for our Assault system and um, we call it the Learn and Play so this is now the intro for this video series I'm intending to do um, detailed um, rules explanations and of course showing examples inside the tabletop simulator for you to get a more easy entry into our assault tactical system so let us jump in and uh, go directly into the first part of assault learn and play yes uh, the first part i want to address the overview of the rulebook uh, version 2.0 um, what is the table of content, what is inside and how is it structured and what is the logic behind our rules I want to explain in this video. But first to start how to get the rulebook version 2.0. To find our rulebook you can uh, go direct uh, on our website. Here we go to our website. <coughs> so the salt website you can go to our games and downloads and then you can click on the latest version English rulebook version 2.0 and you see of course the rulebook at all you can download it or use it digital you can also go to Western Front Sicily and rulebook version 2.0 and there you can find of course it by clicking on this picture. So another way to get our rulebook is to go on the Board Game Geek page of Assault Sicily 43, go to Files and go to the Assault Rulebook version 2.0. Download it and you have it. That's so far how to get our rulebook. So I downloaded the latest rulebook version. You can find the information what version it is on the last page of the rulebook. So you see it version 2.0 and you see the date of the 26th August 24. So let us start with the rulebook overview. The rulebook is structured with this table of content, starting with the description of all game components. Then we have added a quick start chapter providing a training scenario in uh, which you can build up quick and start playing with limited rules. Then we have an introduction and overview. This describes uh, some general information about the game and how the rules are structured in basic rules, unit specific rules and optional rules. The chapter 4 is for the game components in detail. There you can find information, detailed information, how cards are structured, what information are on, how counters are looking, what kind of status marker we have, battle dice, player aids and so on. Chapter 5 is then about the game preparation, so you can find all the information how to select scenarios, how to choose your units by choosing um, your formation cards. You can also play all the scenarios with alternate, alternate history, so you can swap the factions and play it ahistorically. Um, how to set up your game board, how to select again information cards and reinforcements. How to place your units and then how to set up command card deck. In a sequence of play chapter 6 you can um, get an overview how a sequence of play is structured starting with the initiative phase, the planning phase, support phase, action phase, organization phase, victory check phase and placing reinforcements. I will go into detail in a later video. So in support phase, chapter 7 is describing in detail what uh, our, what actions can players do during the support phase. So like indirect fire, how is this performed, 
firing smoke, artillery phase change, special abilities and others. So special actions are described in chapter 8, like players can pause, players can do reaction fire, players can play command cards or do a reaction after uh, being inactive player. So chapter 9 and chapter 10 are the biggest one. I will do separate videos to explain inside the tabletop simulator in detail what is possible. So the chapter 9 are the movement actions and you see your players have a, a real choice what to do with their units and you see of course um, you have from normal movement to fast movement firing you have of course all the special terrain informations for hills, for buildings, road and trails, fortifications, obstacles, obstacles, minefields. How to capture objectives is described here. You have all specific movement actions for different unit types. You have information about how to transport units and you have hide and action and ambush. Of course, in the ranged fire, you have all information in detail how to perform ranged fire. And therefore, you have, of course, line of sight explanations. You have how to check the loss, what is uh, the influence of elevation and loss, um, how is it with uh, direct fire spotting, how is it with arc of fire. You have the process how to resolve your combat situations. Um, what kind of attack dice do you have? You can um, um, see, of course, and read um, how is it calculated to which defense dice players have, and so on. Chapter 11 is in detail then how to resolve close combat, how to initiate to and to perform it, and some special rules in special situations. And the chapter 12, of course, the tactical air and off-board artillery support describes how to integrate this um, optional rule set or expansion into the command deck and how to play it out. So this chapter 13 is a summary of status markers and their effects. So you can go in directly and see what status marker has what effect. And then we have some additional information about the resources and support. And of course, we have an index for you to navigate more easier. So let me share some words about the rules, structure and logic. So we have uh, decided to structure the rules in the following types of rules. So you have it. In the chapter 3.22, you have here the unit specific rules. So we divided the rules into infantry specific rules. Say so every time in green, and green means that every green written rule is only specific to infantry units. So you have a helm here symbol for infantry unit types. Then we have it in red with an artillery symbol for artillery units. And last but not least, we have the vehicle specific rules defined by a tank or vehicle symbol, which shows, oh, this is only for vehicles. Additional to that, we have optional rules. And optional rules are marked in blue letters with an officer's epaulette on the left. Then you can see these are optional and you do not have to use them from the start. You can build them later on in or you can leave it just out to have it nice and quick and without all the shiny things. So if we take now an example for this rule structure, you can of course see it here in the text. You have the command cards in 491. This is an epaulette and it is a blue text. So command cards are optional rules. You can leave this kind of game components out if you want to start and it makes it somehow easier um, accounting less rules. Same thing with the command points here. The epaulette, the epaulette and the blue written text. This is optional. You can leave out the command points when you start playing. If you take a look to tactical air and offboard RT, this is also an expansion and can be optionally be integrated. So just leave it out 
here if you want. So then you see, for example, inside the, this chapter, you see here a helm and you see here green text. So this is only for infantry and you see here a red text, which is only for artillery units and you see a gray text with a vehicle. This is only information for vehicles. This is how we structured the rules. Then, additional to that, you have yellow background information. So this is every time an important information or is it a note um, which you have to take into account if you learn the system. You see here is the example for re reaction fire. This is important to know. And we have, of course, some notes here marked also with yellow background. Additional to that, we have examples inside the rules and you see it with a white background. So you have here a white background for examples. I will take a look here, for example, for an infantry specific rule. This is an example how to move with the delayed action up here. That's all about the rulebook is structured and the rules logic. So just to repeat, you have optional rules like the blue one, but you can skip them if you leave the optional rules out. You have infantry, artillery and vehicle specific rules you have to take into account depending on what kind of unit you are um, activating in the game. That's it for the structure and let's go to the next chapter.